District, and I'm in Manteca, California, about 75 miles east of San Francisco. One of our big challenges was our district is asking us to take attendance. Yikes, how do you take attendance distance learning? And then I thought, well, gosh, I could use Microsoft Forms. So what you're seeing here is my screen for Microsoft Forms, and we don't start uh, in, in direct instruction until next week, Monday, April 6. But this week I've been encouraging my students to go ahead and add, uh, go ahead and go into the Microsoft Forms and take the survey. Now, if you're not familiar with Microsoft Forms, it's a great way to create a quiz or a survey. And you can see here in Microsoft Forms, which is part of your Office 365 suite, you have two choices when you go into Forms. You can either create a quiz, which is great for tests because it gets all the data for you, but for attendance, this is the one I'm looking at, the new form. So when you click on new form, it's super easy to go in and put in a title, check in with Mrs. Dunbar and put in a description and go ahead and add new content. It's already giving me recommendations because I've created some before. But let me show you the one that I created yesterday that my students used. So yesterday I created this form, check in with Mrs. Dunbar, April 1st. And then the first thing I put in is what is your name? Because I'm never sure if they're logged in with their 365 account. Some of them go from their telephones and some of them go from some of them go from their um, um, the computers and devices. So I go ahead and just put the name in as a fail safe. And then I put in a question, how are you feeling today? Just to kind of gauge how that is. And then I have been creating messages from Mrs. Dunbar, which I've been recording from PowerPoint. I make a PowerPoint and then I narrate it. And you can see I put video in as well. I download it as an MP4 and upload it into YouTube so that families can watch them on their smartphones. So I make sure that they've watched their episode and then if they have any questions or comments. So this serves a couple of purposes. I will now know and I can see that 19 of my students checked in yesterday. And here I can click on under what is your name? I can click on more details and I can see all of my students who have clicked in. If I scroll down here, I even get a nice little pie chart and it looks like most of them are just missing their classroom and friends, so am I. Uh, one is enjoying sleeping in. I can guarantee I know which student that is. And some of them are excited to start this cool new thing and they're curious. Fortunately, it looks like all of them, oh, I have 20 responses now, that's great. 20 of them have been watching my daily message. And this says, do you have questions or concerns? If I click on details, then I can go through and I can say, oh, no questions. Oh, when will coronavirus end? That's a great question. What will happen with our science camp? That's kind of sad because our science camp has been canceled. They were not going to be happy to hear that. The other cool thing about this data is that I can go and open it in Microsoft Excel so that I will have a spreadsheet of student answers and of which students attended the session and came in and did the survey. So all I have to do is click on that and go there. So very easy to go in. Now, I had another question from a teacher that I work with today and she said, I don't wanna have to recreate the wheel every day. You know, I would really prefer to have a way that I can copy what I did the day before. Not a problem. So if you wanna copy what you did the day before in this view in forms, you click back on this little word up here, forms to get to this view and you go up to the ellipses in the upper right hand corner and you can see you have the option to copy it so now it's created a copy here for me which i can open up and then i just click in here and i can say oh this is so much easier i can go ahead and make mine for friday which is april 3rd 2020 yay and i can just go back and the name is still there and i can go in if i want to and i can change the picture this is really a cool thing about Microsoft Forms is that you can uh, add pictures when you add a new field, which is really awesome to be honest. And so on here, I can delete this and I can go back in, there's where I add the picture and I can add an image if I want to. I can go and search within Microsoft Forms to find an image that I want. I can grab an image from my OneDrive or I can upload something. 
But in this case, it's a video and I've been creating them on and uploading them to YouTube. So all I have to do is navigate to the video that I want, control C or copy the link that's there, go back to my Microsoft Forms control V and click add. And now my video is going to populate in here and we'll play for the students. It's that simple to make a copy. And you also, power tip here, will want to make sure that when you write a question that you make it a required. There's a little tab down here that says required. You want to make sure that they do answer that question. So again, you go back to the forms to look at your views over here. And I've been changing the backgrounds just to make it so visually for me, I can tell the difference when I look at it. To change the backgrounds, you can go into theme and you can look at some different theme ideas. They have some really cool ones over here. Or you can take a look over here in as you go to the bottom and there's some really cute ones. I think I'm going to pick the green one for this time, the one that's in the park and take a look how that looks. Yeah, I like that. So if I go back to forms, what's nice is now I've got three different views, plus I have the dates. And I would highly recommend when you do these to use naming conventions so it's easy for you to check back and see um, which day and, and uh, which day you've got. So that's what I'm going to be using for attendance uh, using Microsoft Forms. Now I did mention earlier that I've been sending this message from Mrs. Dunbar. Well, I'd like to talk briefly about that because my messages from Mrs. Dunbar are created in PowerPoint, which is my first Microsoft love. PowerPoint is so powerful and they keep adding more and more wonderful things to it. So you can see here, I've created a PowerPoint and this one's a little longer. This is the one I just created for my students today because I'm explaining to them how we're going to be using Teams uh, for communication. Not only am I explaining this to my students, but I'm also explaining it to families because I want to make sure they have the best information to support their students. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about we're homeschooling now, but for our district at least, we're actually providing good content. So what I'm asking parents to do is kind of be like a sergeant at arms. So I'm giving the parents the tools they need as well. So I took a screen snap using the Windows key shift and the letter S like screen snap. And I took a screen snap of the, of the Teams page so my students could see how I have it set up. And you can see here I used, I recorded some digital inking to let them know that they needed to take the survey every day for attendance. I made a slide letting them know there were two places they could click on to find their assignments. I even went into their first assignment and the inking that you see uh, when it plays as a video actually talks about all the things I'm expecting them to have. And then I went in and talked about these group channels because I made private channels, which you're going to be hearing about next week, I believe, from our friend Scott Bricker. Uh, I made private channels for my students to use. And then most importantly, my district's been really good about putting information online for students and for families, and we've been creating a whole series of PDFs. So I want to direct my students to the website. So this is a screen recording. And then of course, bringing them back to attendance. It is so important students that you go ahead and do attendance because it's important for me. And then a video message for me on the final slide. Pretty simple, right? <laughs> kind of complicated. Tammy. But, Tammy. Yeah. Charity. Would you would be you willing, we have a question have a here question asking here. if you would be willing to share your duplicate with us? Absolutely, I can do that. I will absolutely do that. Uh, shall I do, uh, can I do it while we're at the end or should I do it now, Charity? I think I can do that. I think I can go in here and do a share, get a link to a duplicate, copy it, go back to our chat, go into our, it's like I've done this before. Okay, there is a link in there now to duplicate the, um, the forms that I had. Did that work, Charity? Can you see it on your end? I'm assuming she can. Okay, so yes, once I thank put, you, okay, you're welcome. Thank you for for asking me that. That's a great that's a great question. And we're all teachers. We're all in this together. So yeah, we share with each other. That's what we do: beg, borrow, and share. Right. 
So you're more than welcome. Um, so this is what my PowerPoint looks like. And then there's this great thing. If you're in a Microsoft Microsoft district, you have access to stream. Think of stream as your district's answer to YouTube. So if you log into your district, you're going to see on the opening page all of the Microsoft tools that you have in Office 365. And one of them is Microsoft Stream. When you're in a PowerPoint, it's really easy to click on publish to stream. Now notice I'm not saving it as a video file. I'm going directly to save to stream because look what it says. Share your presentation as a video. All animations, transitions, and narrations are retained. And I always tick on this one, allow everyone in your organization to see the video because sometimes I want to share that video with other teachers and administrators across the district. So I always think that's a good idea. And then you click publish. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, what happens when you send it to publish, it opens up. Here's Microsoft Stream. You'll get a home page when you click on Microsoft Stream and where you have created or uploaded content, it appears here. So I've created videos and if I click on videos, I'm going to see the videos that I have created for my classroom. Now what you're seeing here is something a little different than the message from Mrs. Dunbar because that one I downloaded as an MP4. What you're seeing here are uh, lesson plans that I've gone ahead and created in PowerPoint because I have 34 students. I teach fifth grade and there's no way that I can do a live event like this with 34 students. I love my students, but they do not have the digital citizenship that everyone today here has in keeping their microphones closed, right? And muted. So we are recording lessons in PowerPoint and we're uploading them into stream. So I'm just going to show you a few of the things that you can bring into a PowerPoint. So I did record my face and when you do record, you know, you can treat this just like it's a, an image that you can crop. So you can see I actually film myself bigger, but I crop my face in. So so when the uh, the video actually plays in format, it's actually going to look like I'm talking, right? Because I'm weird. Um, I've also used the uh, screen snap, the Windows key shift letter S to actually grab content out of our curriculum. We use Wonders uh, by McGraw Hill. And so I'm bringing in content from curriculum. I'm bringing in worksheets from curriculum, but realizing that we didn't want to hand out worksheets or or have to deal with books or any kind of thing like that because in California we're kind of a shelter in place state. So what I've done is taken screen snaps of the pages from the workbooks and kind of modified them in here, bringing them in and and I use the cropping element so I can crop it to fit right and to do the things I want to do with them. And I'm having my students use a binder and paper because I'm pretty confident they're going to have that. Um, I've used the insert online pictures a lot. What's great about that is if you use the insert online pictures, you get creative commons. So you get images that don't have copyright on them and you're free to use. So that's kind of a nice thing. Um, you can see I've also cropped, um, excuse me, clipped stories from our curriculum so students can read them and can do uh, what we usually do in our practice books. I kind of felt like when they're doing their curriculum at home, it needed to look a little bit like what they see in the classroom so they're comfortable with what they're doing. Um, some of us use teachers pay teachers and I'm using that for this and a word work bingo. So to work with their spelling words, I thought this would be the most fun thing to do. Um, I've got a paragraph of the week uh, that I create myself and put in, let me move that. It goes along with the uh, big question that we have. And then this is kind of cool. Um, I was playing with around, I have a document reader here and I was playing around with the idea that, you know, can I, can I use my document reader and record it? And if your document reader comes into your computer, you can absolutely record what you do in your document reader. So that's kind of a fun thing that that I played around with this week. And again, you can see curriculum. And just as an aside, I recommend this is a great time for students to be using Minecraft at home and Tech challenges are a really great thing for them to do in the afternoons. Minecraft has so many amazing lessons that are uh, standards based and aligned with curriculum. 
So I high recommend for students to do that. And of course, I'm a big genius hour person and we've been working on genius hour. So my students can continue their genius hour projects at home. And your district probably has access to certain programs. And one of the ones that we really like that we haven't used a lot is called Typing Agent. So you might want to look in your district and see what kind of apps are available for students to use. But you know all of the testing is online. So it's probably a great time for students to practice their typing. And notice I took screen snaps so students can see how to get into the program I'm sending them to. And by the way, as a power tip, this Storyline Online is a great website by the Screen Actors Guild. And we have, uh, there are all kinds of celebrities and actors who are reading uh, stories. The content is about K-5 and they read the stories uh, it's a recording and so the students can go and read the stories. I chose this one because Dulé Hill is reading a story called As Fast As Words Could Fly about a young boy in the civil rights movement who's frustrated because he can't seem to do anything to help but his grandfather gives him a typewriter and through the power of learning how to type and get the word out, he's able to be of help. And then I have a pause for reflection at the end and talking about how the day went. So I've got this whole narrated PowerPoint that when I'm done, I'm going to go into my recording and I'm going to publish it to stream. Now, one last tip I'm going to leave with you is if you're in your PowerPoint and you don't see that recording tab, there's a way to get it. And I'm glad this is being recorded so you can go back and watch. So you go to file and let me go back. I did that quickly. So you go over to the far left and click on file and you scroll all the way down to options. When you click on options, you're going to see a lot of things to choose from, but what you're wanting to do is customize your ribbon. When you click on customize ribbon, you're going to come over here to where it has main tabs and scroll down. And if you don't have that recording tab, here's how you're going to get it. You're going to put that tick mark right there under recording and you're going to click OK. When you click OK, you're going to have this tab on there. And the reason that's great is because you can see now you can record slideshow screen recording. You can save it as a show, which is basically a PowerPoint that kind of goes through on its own and loops. You can export it to a video or you can publish it back to Microsoft Stream, which I showed you earlier. So this is really cool because now when I've got these lessons, I can easily go into my stream and I can click on share and I can take this link and share it with my students in their assignment on Teams, or I could share it in any other way. I really wish, I know we're getting really close to my time, so we've got lots of good questions, but I do want to tell you about record slide and screen recording, but there's no time. So my high recommend to you is to come back tomorrow when on NCCE, you're going to have the lovely and amazing Jennifer Brown, who's going to be talking about creating those online lessons using PowerPoint, and she's going to show you all the tools within PowerPoint that can help you craft lessons. Keep in mind, and my one last power tip, is that when you're making your PowerPoints, think about time. Uh, sometimes teachers, we tend to talk a lot, and I've really tried to be very, very good when I'm recording my lessons, that I'm very efficient with my words and very succinct. And that actually is probably easier for my students to follow the directions if I do that. And the one last power tip is you can see I've added a pause button on the slides that I expect them to pause and actually read the content or where I expect them to pause and answer the questions that are on the page. It's not a real pause button that actually works, but it's a pause button that will help my students give them a visual cue. So those are the kinds of things that I've been doing. Uh, in in PowerPoint and using forms for attendance and using stream to upload uh, longer videos because if you do have stream your district probably has about a terabyte of memory for you which is a lot of memory and which is really awesome so that's what I have to share with you today and I would love to hear questions so I can show you something or answer your questions. So Charity, do we have any questions that I can answer for our amazing audience? Wow, Tammy, that was absolutely amazing and a whole plethora of information. I'm definitely gonna have to go back and watch this again, but we do have one question um, from mm -hmm. Jen Anderson, and she was wondering if you would be also willing to share the copy of the PowerPoint sample that you just showed us. 
Uh, yes, yes, it's, I'm trying to think if I have it saved in my OneDrive. I will take a look. I'm more than happy to share all of this. Um, I, I've already been doing trainings with, in my district, we have a little over 1400 teachers and I've been doing a lot of training with them and I'm pretty sure I uploaded one to my OneDrive. So I'll check right now if I can stick that into, uh, but while I'm boring you with all the files that I have in my, my OneDrive, are there any other questions, Charity? Um, yes, we have been stated that we need to have a master class in developing your content to put in PowerPoint lessons. There's so many ideas. So thank you for sharing that as well. Um, also, would you be able to share a duplicate link to one of your forms that includes a daily video message of you? Was that included? Oh, you, in the you link want to you see shared? my daily video messages? Yeah. They're adorable. Um, yeah. Um, that is also possible, but if you like, okay. and I'm going to shut myself up here, um, I will also gladly just share with you the playlist. I Again, I put this in YouTube because I kind of figured that would be easier for my families to, um, easier for them to access, especially mm -hmm. because so many, I'm at a, our school is Title I, and so many of them um, only have access to smartphones. Um, so there we go. So I just put in the uh, the playlist on YouTube for that. And uh, my OneDrive is spinning. So there we go. Uh, would okay, it be, great. Charity, would it be okay if I shared it later? I'm going to have to navigate to yeah. it, I think. That's okay. absolutely fine. We'll be able to okay, put it cool. back we into can get the, that out the meeting and, chat. And you wanted one of these with my video in it. There's one. So okay. I'm going to do share. I'm going to get a link to duplicate. I'm going to copy. I'm going to come back to Teams. Yeah, what is it about computer people? We always talk while we're doing things. I haven't figured that out. <laughs> I'm okay. Glad, I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one that does that, Tammy. Absolutely are not. So there's the link to the... Um, the uh, form, uh, yeah, the form that has the uh, the video c content in it. Perfect. Perfect. That is great. Thank you so much for being willing to share with us. Is there anyone else that has a question for Tammy? I you mean, can put it in the chat window or unmute your microphone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. Is we've got to share with each other. I mean, it's and especially if you've got someone who's created something, you know, why recreate the wheel? That's why a lot of us use something like Teachers Pay Teachers, right? Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of things done in there that we can use. And, and I do pull in content from a lot of places. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. And we do have another question here, Tammy. Yeah. What are the screen snap keys again? Oh, great question. So screen snap keys. Oh, I think I'm going to be able to do this. I think you're going to like this. So it's the Windows key, which is that funky little key at the bottom left hand of your screen and it looks like a window on that there's a or to it it's like the old control alt delete so i am actually uh going on with my document reader now because yes you can use it come here Getting fancy can you see it yes ma'am we can windows key shift and the letter s so it's going to be windows key first then the shift key then the letter S. So one more time. This isn't Sally. All right. Windows Shift S. Yeah. So it's Windows key Shift S. And S for snip. And now you yes, can see on right, my screen right. that what that does is it goes gray. And mm -hmm. then what I can do with these crosshairs is I can actually take a picture. And that goes into my computer's uh, clipboard memory, whatever you like to call it. And then I can shut this and I can go back to Teams because it's in my computer's memory. And I can click on Control V, which is paste. And if you're in the chat, you can see that I just uploaded the screen snap that I just took. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Tammy. Oh, not a problem. There's a program that's built in to if you have, um, if you've got all your updates, there's a program called Snip and Sketch. Let me raise this up. It's right here. 
-hmm. And that actually will open up a program that you can go in and you can snip. But the the good thing about using it this way, and I'm just going to snip Charity's logo there, is that when I snip it, now I have the option to actually save it. So I can save it as a, a PNG and actually have the picture to save. When you do a screen snap, that just puts it in the recent memory. This puts it in the file, so I've got it for later use. So again, great. that's called sketch and snip. That's another great tip, another whole session that we could have had. Thank you, Cami. just on capturing. How do you capture on your computer? Lots Any other questions? And Jennifer is going to show some incredible ways to capture what's on your computer tomorrow too. So be sure you tune in tomorrow because that's going to be another amazing session. There's so much you can do with these tools. Yes. And as a matter of fact, now that you mentioned that, I did put those sessions that are coming up into the meeting chat. And so, yes, we do have Jennifer um, doing creating online lessons using PowerPoint. And we have Scott Bricker that's going to be talking about creating small group opportunities in remote learning with teams and private channels. Um, I will be tuning in with you um, to talk about accessibility in Microsoft Teams. And then Megan will be joining us and talking about chat, private message versus posting in the whole team communication piece of Teams. So thanks for sharing your screen there, Tammy. That's awesome. <laughs> I was ready for you. So tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, one o'clock will be Jennifer. And it's, I think we're doing these for the next five work days and then after that as needed, or what's the plan, Charity? Yes, so what we're gonna be doing is doing these first five and then we will be doing one every week. And so stay tuned, we will be obviously putting these messages out with what's up and coming and check your social media stations, whichever one you prefer, we'll be posting it on all of them, as well as you'll be able to find it on our NCCE website, which is ncce.org. And we have time for one more question for Tammy, if anybody out there has a question. And if you don't have a question, realize that you can always reach out to me. I am on the Twitterverse, at Tammy Dunbar, T-A-M-M-Y-D-U-N-B-A-R. There's the spelling. Um, all of us are on the Twitterverse, so you can reach out on the Twitterverse and let us know if you have a question. And as Charity mentioned, uh, all of us are um, professional learning specialists at NCCE, so you can always find us on the ncce.org website as well. We are here for you. We are all in this together. But the nice thing is that we have this professional learning network that we can depend on and we can reach out and get some help and support. And I tell you, when you collaborate with teachers who are as exciting as the teachers that I've been collaborating with, there's no way our students are, are going to fail. Our students are so well positioned because the teachers are so enthusiastic and so full of creative ideas. I hope our students, uh, I don't even know if they can appreciate how much we're doing behind the scenes, but I'm super excited to be a part of this group. Well, and thank you, Tammy. We do have one last question is, can you explain how to use your document reader? <laughs> I knew she would like that. I knew that was an interesting thing. So my document reader is a hover cam uh, and it, let me click in here. So the hover cam plugs in with a USB. I think you can see it here. Yes, ma'am. And if you've got a document reader that you can hook directly into your computer, then, oh, this is Inception. Don't blow your mind. Whoa. But uh, the document reader then, uh, if, it show, if it hooks into your computer, it will show on your screen. And if it shows on your screen, then you have the capability to capture what you have on your screen, right? And I know that Jennifer's gonna talk about that tomorrow. Um, if you have a computer, or excuse me, a, a document reader that has one of those blue um, VGA hookups, obviously it's not gonna hook into your computer unless your computer has that. or you could order an adapter that goes from VGA to USB, um, but that's how mine hooks in. It just hooks in directly, and mine is a, um, it's just a, you can see it on my screen there. It's a, it's an app, it's a hover cam. But I know that I have teachers at my site that have ladybugs, and a couple of them have figured out with adapters how to hook that in so the feed comes into their computer and then they can capture that. Because that's going to be really nice, too, if you're in a meeting like this with students and you can say, OK, students, just hang on. Let me go to my document reader and then we'll talk about how to do this problem. Right. So that's going to make it really easy. 
So if you've got that capability, that's really awesome. Plus, it's another way for them to see you. Oh, that wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tammy. And thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Again, tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, for another episode about creating online lessons using PowerPoint. And Jennifer will be leading us tomorrow night. So we look forward to seeing you, and we'll see you soon. Good night. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Charity.